Two young high school pitchers average about the same speed for their fastballs, but Robbie seems to be a little less consistent. Using the given data, perform a test comparing variances in order to make a conclusion about whether or not Robbie's pitching speeds contain more variance. So we have the two boys' pitching speeds here, just some sample uh, pitches from Robbie and from Aaron. And this will be a test comparing population variances. And that test is laid out the same way as if we were testing uh, a mean or two means or populations, and that is a null and an alternative hypothesis. And a lot of times I like to set up the alternative hypothesis first. Now we're testing variances, so we have sigma squared is the symbol for, for variance. That's uh, standard deviation squared, and sigma for population standard deviation. Now we, all we have, all we will have is a sample si standard deviation and therefore a sample variance, but we're using that to then make some um, some conclusion about about the population of all of their pitches. So I'm going to put a subscript here, Robbie's. Robbie's variances, or variance, is that greater than the variance of Aaron's pitches. And then up in the um, null hypothesis is the variance of Robbie's less than or equal to the variance of Aaron's pitches. And by the way, a lot of books, for good reason, will put equals to. They'll always hold the null hypothesis strictly at equals to. Uh, but other, I know other books use just this opposite. But no matter what, whenever you see an equal sign attached, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or just equals to, that will be in the null. And then strictly greater than, less than, or not equal to will be in the alternative. Now, in words, it's helpful sometimes to put this in words. So we're saying that Robbie's variance or, or Robbie's pitches have more variance. Or I should say pitching speeds. Robbie's pitching speeds contain more variance. Now, the test of variances is an F test, but nonetheless, we will be finding a p-value. So you could do this with formulas and tables, and that's fine. You'd be uh, looking up in uh, the that area under the F distribution, and that F distribution kind of looks like, like this, and you'd be looking up this area to the right of some F value. Now, Excel has a very nice feature all packaged in. It's one of its add-ins, and it'll just give you this p-value, this area to the right. So we say tools, add-ins, and this is with an older version. This is with Office XP. So if you have the, the older version, take heart that, that you have these features as well. And, of course, if you have a newer version, you have, uh, you have these features also. Tools, add-ins, analysis tool pack. Yeah, we've got it. And then data analysis. Data analysis under the tools menu, we're going to be doing an F test. And it says, it goes on, two sample for variances. Okay. And what is, uh, what's the data that we're taking in? Well, all of Robbie's pitches, including Robbie's name, I've got labels attached or uh, checked here. And then variable two range, it's all of Aaron's pitchers, pitches, including his name because I have the labels checked. Alpha. Now, we're not given an alpha, and this is interesting. Uh, sometimes, a lot of times, just in, in practice, you won't be given an alpha. That's the alpha is signific significance level. So I'll just write that, 0 0.05. That's the significance level. Um, and if you're not given that, you, uh, it's often safe to just assume alpha to be 0 0.05. But, you know, it, it depends, of course, on the application. But for this one, we're just going to take alpha to be 0 0.05. And so we put that in there. Output range, that's just where do we want to start um, displaying our data. So I've chosen cell A11. And I'll say OK. And it gives us what we want here, a, a nice little output. Now, uh, the mean. The mean are about the same, the means. And that's what, we, that's what the problem says. The variance. 
we can see Robbie's variance is a lot higher than Aaron, at least for this sample data. But we'll do a little test and we say, hey, can we, can we use that sample data and really, is it fair to make a conclusion about the population of Robbie's pitches? Well, let's see. The, the p-value that comes right here, the one-tailed p-value, is 0 0.04. So let's write that down. The p-value equals 0 0.0404. That is less than our alpha of 0 0.05. And because it's less than our alpha, we can then make our decision about the null. We can reject the null. So unfortunately for Robbie, uh, statistics hits him. He, he can't say, well, it's just a sample. He can say, well, you know, we've got We've got it on good authority, or there's a very good chance that uh, overall, even, Robbie, your your pitches are less consistent. So we reject the null. It's kind of like crossing it out, and then we're siding with the alternative. So we can say evidence suggests. Now, we, we still say evidence suggests because there's a, you know, some margin of error here. Not to confuse that with margin of error with confidence intervals, but there's there's some some level, small level of doubt, 4% anyway. But this, but for the most part, evidence suggests that Robbie's pitches are less consistent, or that Robbie's pitching speeds have more variance. So, I'll put it the way uh, the way it begins the question that that Robbie is less consistent. Now, new new problem. Just hypothetically, if we were testing, if the uh, if the null were that sigma squared equals sigma squared, that's uh, Robbie and and Aaron, and the alternative were that sigma squared is not equal to the variances are not equal to so it's not a one tailed anymore it's going to be two tailed because our because our alternative is is not equal to then our p value would equal two times what excel gives us because we're looking at two tails so we're looking at uh this tail over here and this tail over here and I know it's not symmetrical but but it still works you say two times um, what Excel gives you because this is Excel just gives you the one tail and that would then equal um, 0 0.08 and you would say wait a minute now now we're gonna fail to reject the null but here's what happens here's the relationship when you're doing an F test this test uh, comparing variances is that the significance level alpha for a two tail or that is for the, for what we have here not equal to equals two times the alpha for one tail so in other words we would have a uh, point let's write it up here 0 0.10 would be the alpha for the uh, for the two tail, and so then 0 0.08 is still less than 0 0.10, and we can still reject the null and say yes, their variances are different.